Welcome to hell. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Jersey Shore Musicians Podcast. I'm Matt. That's Jeff. Hello. And tonight we have a Jersey Shore legend, Mr. Eddie Testa. You're not supposed to laugh at that. (laughs) (laughs) He's he's so modest. That's great. (laughs) He's a great soul. How you doing tonight? Good, man. How you guys doing tonight? Uh, I'm still alive. I'm here. Good to see you both. Yeah, exactly. How are things going for you? It's turning into a busy summer. Yeah. So it's just getting crazy. That's great. Still getting crazy. <laughs> so we like to start things off. How did you get started in this crazy business called music? Well, how far back do you want me to go? As far as you want. Yeah. Well, I started off as a guy carrying the drums for his grandfather at nine, ten years old in New York. Wow. Uh, and then in high school, getting I was a drummer in high school, and. Then I got into bands and I thought I was like, I wanted to be like Don Henley, you know, Mm -hmm. all my, you know, the singing drummer whole thing. And then I started writing songs at like 14, 15 on on the guitar. I was learning little guitar things here and there. And then uh, it just transformed into being in a band. My first band I was in, I was 16 years old. And you were the drummer or you were the singer? I was just a singer. Just a singer. Yeah. Which is a whole nother long story. I don't want to bore you with that. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Now, a lot of people don't know, probably don't know, that you were a drummer first. Right. So your rhythmic aspect that you bring fronting your band, there's probably the reason right there. And that's why drummers hate me. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that does happen. I'm a firm believer that I think drummers hate everybody. Yeah, there's something wrong with drummers. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, There must be something wrong with me, too, back then. I don't know. <laughs> it's a crazy business. But, I, you know, listen, if you don't love it, I wouldn't be in it so long. True. You know, a lot of guys that get in it, they're gone. They still desire to have the music in them, you know, in their lives. But things get in the way. They're, they get in the way of themselves, whatever the case is. I've been fortunate enough to be able to do it whenever I feel like doing it and when I can do it, when I want to do it. Okay. So, but so, I started back in Asbury. God, I don't even know how long ago it was. <laughs> I mean, I used to be a guy that just hung out around the pony and... And the whole circuit scene and stuff like that. And then uh, meeting a lot of people, jamming with a lot of people, late nights. I mean, I wasn't around in the the early the earlier days where Bruce and Southside, they're a little bit older than me. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I, I certainly learned my licks from a lot of guys you okay. know, that, that I watched and envied. And, you know, George Thies was a great... Uh, mentor kind of for me and then all those guys that were in his band in cahoots and uh, um, Cold Blast and Steel and just different guys that I'm still friends with today and who's alive and who's not Mm -hmm. I still talk to them and still have great times you know (laughs) and they come out and play and they're diehard musicians oh that's cool sorry excuse me (laughs) you're fired Put your phone on mute. Sorry, guys. Yes. <laughs> so, but we'll I snip um, that right out of there. <laughs> it was weird how my my journey into playing out. Like I said, I was in a, in a band early on called Grand Union. I was 16 years old. And I was fronting a band. Okay. And uh, I did that for I think it was like two summers. It might have been even shorter than that. I don't remember. But what happened was. My brother came home one day and he said, you got to get out from behind the drums because that's not hip anymore. That's not cool to be a drummer that's singing. You got to be in the front because <laughs> the 80s were coming in, you know? Gotcha, yeah. And uh, the late 70s. And I was like, I'm not doing that. So I faked playing the guitar for like shows. I would just put the guitar on, be turned off. I'd just be up there, you know, singing Strumming, and playing. yeah. And, Get my act together and, and learning the guitar as I was doing that. Okay. But I was writing a lot of songs. I was always writing all my life. I've always, it's, I don't remember ever not writing mm-hmm. music, whether drum beat, making songs up, whatever. Okay. So I wrote like these 10 songs and my brother was a guitar player who was, 
who was uh, schooled. You know, he went to, he took lessons and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. So he would teach me little chords and this and that. He'd, we'd work on my melodies, my harmonies, whatever we worked on. Try to write songs together, you know. But uh, when he joined a band and he invited me to come down and see their band. I wasn't in a band at the time. And I went down to see the band and the, the lead singer and the songwriter, because everybody did originals back then. Yeah. Everybody was trying to, you know, get the golden ring like we always, we yeah. still are. We still try, yeah. But, but uh, so I went down there and the, the something happened to the, the guy that was writing the songs and the singer. So my brother was like, well, let's mess around one of your songs. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to show anybody my songs, you mm-hmm. know. So he said, let's just do it. I, let's do that one that we were working on. So he's younger than me and my brother. Okay. So we started messing around. And the drummer was grooving. And the next thing you know, we, had, we completed the whole song that night. Oh, and wow. they were like, wow, this is, this is great. And little by little, that band became my band. Okay. And that's how that happened. And then we started doing the normal things, the high school uh, you know, the high school talent shows and, you know, the the same, everything that evolved, evolves yeah. like almost every band, right? Yeah. You become this, you begin that, you get a name, yeah. you know, whatever. Then you get a bigger place, they have more yeah. money, and then you right. get expected more things from you, and <laughs> yeah. Never got money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's still true. Still chasing that one. <laughs> yeah. Still not getting any money. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh. It became an all original band. I started off as an all original band. Okay. I never did covers. And then when I was about 20, I guess it was, we had been already rehearsing for two years. Just we stayed in a, in a barn. Nobody ever heard our music, nothing. Okay. And a couple, I invited one of my friends, this guy named George McMorrow, who was pretty big in the, in the Asbury scene at the time. He was like, uh, what are you doing now? And I said, well, I'm just playing, you know, rehearsing, trying to get this band right, blah, blah, blah. I said, why don't you come down, listen to us, tell me what I could tweak and what we could do to get better. So he came down and he was like blown away by the band. He was like, you guys are sitting in a basement, you should be out playing. And I was like, well, we don't have any places to play. So he got us into the Brighton Bar in the, in Long Branch. So we were, we started playing in there. You know, that's like a five, six bands every night, mm-hmm. you know, getting yeah. everybody in. The places would be packed because uh, drinking age was 18. So places were jumping. I mean, you could play seven nights a week and it would be, always be packed. So we were building and building a following. And then one night, uh, Sonny Ken was supposed to open up for John Eddie at the Stone Pony. And uh, John was on his way up to becoming like a, you know, who he is today, you know, signed artist and on Columbia and all that. And uh, Sonny Ken had gotten sick. Yeah. It was a New Year's Eve. And George said, you guys can open up it if you want. And from that moment on that we opened up, we were like the pony. We were the ponies boys. Oh, like, wow. Like we did every, every Friday and Saturday night. Every opened up for any band that came through there. Okay, I can't even remember. I've done so many opening acts. I don't remember who I even. Sometimes I read something. I go, I don't remember being there. <laughs> you know, or doing that. Yeah, they all kind of know? blur together. Yeah, yeah, because it was it was just a whirlwind of years and years and years. Okay. So and we were called, <coughs> excuse me, we were called Fast Eddie and the Cruisers. Okay. Until we went to the Pony, then we became Eddie and the Cruisers. We took the fast off. Okay. So you know, you know, I'll tell you about the story about mm-hmm. the cruisers, Eddie and the cruiser movie, and all that yeah. stuff. If you're Cult interested, following, yeah, yeah. But um, that's how I I started. Okay, getting out, you know. And sometimes it, the the band was really good. We thought till mm-hmm. we hear old tapes, and then we say, "Holy shit, we sucked." Well, we you all know? say that because you kind of grow musically right. together, and you get better, and not even better, you just closer or more one mind going forward you know type yeah thing. yeah and you know everybody looked to me a lot of the guys that were in the band like you're the songwriter they think that you know every that the, tell them how to play the piano how mm-hmm. to play the guitar how to play the bass how to play the saxophone whatever pieces you have they look to you as a songwriter and you don't want to have a dictatorship in a band 
but sometimes you have they, to. <laughs> well, exactly, and sometimes they don't. They didn't know or have the um, ability to create. Mm. A lot of people can play. Yeah. There's great players out there. Yeah. Some people can't create. Yeah, I see that a lot. And Even still to this day. Yeah. I see so that you don't a want lot. a dictatorship, but there's always got to be an alpha. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? But I never wanted to be that guy, but I always became that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a there was a point in my career where I was like, I don't want to be the leader of the band. I just want to join a band, show play up. rhythm. Yeah, show up, play, and have a good show time. up rhythm. Don't I don't want to worry about where we're booked, uh, who's getting a PA, who's whatever. I didn't yeah. want to worry about anything. But it seems like every band I got in, <laughs> I became the leader of the band. Well, I had to, certain you know, people have that charisma, and you just you know emanate that whole thing already. I, you know, knowing you for as long as I've known you now, yeah. for, you know, I've seen some of the things that you know whether you've played out or the way you handle a recording session. You know, yeah. which we'll jump into recording. But you know, I wouldn't look at you and say you're a dictator. I would definitely say you're a team player thrown into the position that you have to lead. I'll, I'll accept that. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. don't, don't think you're yeah. a dictator. I know a couple of dictators, and they are definitely dictators. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. shots fired, huh? You like that? <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> shots fired. It's nobody in particular. Um, yeah. So, all right, let's talk about the current lineup and what you're doing. Uh, as the Eddie Testa band, right? That's right. the whole name of the band. We've been together 12 years. And uh, it's gone through some changes because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, unfortunately, my drummer from the Cruisers days okay. was in, went to service when he got out. When he, was, he wasn't even out. He just got stationed in Freehold area. So he bought a house and everything. He called me up. He was like, let's put a band together. Let's get the you know the typical move let's from the, the movie. Band back together. Yeah, let's get the band back together. So I was like, I'm not doing nothing right now. I would, yeah, I would love to do do something with you. So his name was Dave Barkalo. Unfortunately, Dave was the drummer in the band, killer drummer, great person. Got pancreatic cancer and died. Ugh. So he was with me for five, six years though. We were. It wasn't like you know we weren't together. We played. We had fun. We we were having a great time. And then I have Kenny. They call him Time Bomb. He was okay. in a band at the time. Kevin Gilmore was in a band. Um, who who else was in a band? Uh, Neil D. Simone is still in a band. Okay. Kenny's still in a band. Uh, and now we have a drummer, Ilya Stepkowski, mm-hmm. and a Super horn nice player, guy. John Farnsworth. Also And nice I've guy. gone through different people over the different years. And listen, when Dave passed away, the guys that I knew, which are all, to me, they're all the A-list players. Mm-hmm. They couldn't help me enough to take gigs. They were they were organizing the gigs themselves. Oh, wow. Who's going to play drums for Eddie this night, that night? Oh, whatever. that's cool. They, I, I can't even, um, I can't even tell you the the gratitude I owe them mm-hmm. for all that. Joe Belia, Lance Highland Stark. Um, just, just a, a bunch of guys, you know. They were just filling in for till I found Ilya, mm-hmm. and I finally found Ilya, and he's been with me six years now. Okay. So, yeah, it's been it's been a great run, man. <laughs> it is it's been a, great run. a lot of fun. It's, yeah. it's a, listen, you got to remember, I'm older, right? So, no, I I am much. I am blessed to be where I'm at mm-hmm. right now in my life, and I'm still able to do it. And I do it to the best I can on any given night. That's all you can ask of any any of us musicians. Sure. Yeah. You know, you might have had a rough day, but you still went out and gave it a hundred percent of what you had mm-hmm. that day. Yeah. And I, I applaud everybody for that. And that's what I try to do. All my guys are like that. And uh it, it's just it's a blessing to be where we are and play and people still want to come and see us. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. People still want to see the band. Yeah, you have a good following. All, so, I mean, you see the videos online and all social media. You see it, you go, man, these guys are still rocking. Yeah. You know? like, And it's 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 great to have the friendships that we make in this business. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And the, the people we meet and we get close to, you know, after a while, they don't... And you've been in... You guys have been in bands, so you know. Yeah. You're, you're, the people that come and see you, we call them fans, mm-hmm. but they become our friends. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, I, I had the best compliment I ever had in my whole life. This woman came up to me at, at the cabin one night. And that was, a, that was a, at a time when we, we had drummers coming in for like two years. So we were playing the same songs. I mean, absolutely the same songs in the same way for two years. Okay. And this woman came up to me and she goes, you know, I come and see you guys. And you guys play the same <coughs> songs in the same order. And right away, my eyes roll back in my head. I'm like, here it comes, man. I I, I know it's coming, that she's sick of hearing the songs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But she didn't. She said, I don't always come for the music. I come because of the people you bring. The people that come and see you mm -hmm. are just a great bunch of people. And I I was proud of that. I was like, that's, that's, that's a yeah, hell of a compliment. Of. Yeah. You know what I mean? The people that we surround ourselves with are what people see. And if you surround yourself with great people, I belong to this group called the Shell Peeps. They're the best people I've ever met in my life besides my own family. You know, all my friends are great. And they all fit into that Shell Peep thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I just, you know, we're so fortunate, right? Yeah. I mean, you get you your... Get, a lot of bands don't have what, what you have, though, either. So, I mean... I think... I, I, I'd like to think, because I don't get to see a lot of bands... And I'm sure in your heyday, a, you had what I feel. My heyday. <laughs> well, when you, you know, you, because you played in a, you played in a very popular band around here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and I I'm sure exactly. you did. It's just funny. Yeah, so I look at, when you say, when someone says they were in a popular band, I think that they're experiencing what I'm experiencing. The oh, same, yeah. you know I what mean, I'm saying? That they're feeling the that. same thing I'm feeling because it's one thing when your friends come. And then your friends bring somebody that never seen you before. Yeah. Or somebody comes and never sees you. And they go, wow. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. Yeah. And there's no, nobody's on a high horse. Everybody's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's just, to me, I, I don't know. I mean, I just, I think that it, it's so much, I, I know it's corny to say, but it, there's so much love in the world that, that we need that escape. Because we still have to go back to the shit on the TV and the this yeah, and the that and that's what, true. what you know things happen in your life. No, but, that's very true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, see, as like a, as a singer, I know I my moment like you just said is like I love looking down and just seeing that person with their eyes closed and just you you can feel that they're just feeling it at Absorbing. that moment. You know? Yeah, yeah, man. That that, that how much better can it get than that? It, it we doesn't get much people say that. musicians bring joy to them. Right, okay. but people don't realize how much they give to us. True, as musicians, yeah. it yeah. works both ways. The energy. We just played that show on Sunday. Mm -hmm. There was so much energy in that place from the band, but we got it from the people. Which then heights and heightens yours. And, yeah, it was, it was off the charts. I was like, this was the best party of the summer. <laughs> it was. It was the best time I played all summer. Wow. Even though I had a lot of great gigs. Yeah. It's nice to have that one where you could go, man. That was it. You yeah. Know? I mean, I'm hoping to top it this weekend or do the same. Or the <laughs> Well, that's that's the whole thing is like, well, all right, well, I did that, you know, yesterday. I got to right. do better today. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, well, that's great because you've made a, a great name for yourself at the Jersey Shore. You actually have a famous person's mother actually really loves your band. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. kind of a nice little feather in the cap to go, well, you know what? She likes yeah. it. I had my 15 minutes of fame with all that. Yeah. That, I, how can you not? I mean, you know, when somebody says Bruce Springsteen's mother loves Eddie Testa band, well, how much better yeah. can it get than that? Yeah, I mean, her son is a yeah. rock star, and she <laughs> loves coming to see you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Of course, well, she's for, obviously proud of her son, but still, yeah, at the yeah, end of the day, yeah. it's like, well, yeah. I love this band, though, too. I, I would have liked her for, for her to have said, you know, if Bruce came with her, for and he wanted to get up and play with me for her to say, no, Bruce, let's sit this one out. Let Eddie, let Eddie do oh, the work. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I would have been like... Mr. Springsteen, don't you ever do that. I need him up here yeah. with me. You know? <laughs> but uh, no, it's cool. We're both freehold boys, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm. They always call me. Uh, I'm freehold second son. 
Oh, uh, okay. You know? mm-hmm. So I'll take that. Yeah. Better than being called nothing. Yeah. Right? Or so, not yeah. wanted, son, you know? Yeah, yeah, not wanted to get out of town. <laughs> the they didn't drive child. me out of town. They always <laughs> asked me back, so. You're like the redheaded stepchild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So, okay, so we talked about how you started, where you started off with originals, and this now, you know, I guess uh, maybe the last 12 years has changed over to more of a cover-esque thing. No, no. What happened was when we were playing at the Pony, mm-hmm. They wanted to give us one of the bands, and I, I don't remember what band was playing Thursday nights, but they had to give it up for a while. And so the guys who owned the pony, uh, Big Butch and Little Butch, is the ones I knew, I remember. Um, <laughs> Little Butch came to me and said, If you guys learn some cover stuff, we'll give you the Thursday night. Okay. So we went home and learned every three chord uh, Creedon <laughs> song and. Yeah. Any, you know, uh, Elvis Presley, any song that we could learn that was quick, mm-hmm. that we could put 15, 20 songs together. Okay. And then we started doing Thursdays. And then we started becoming half covers and half original. Mm-hmm. And that's what we did the whole time we were the cruisers. Okay. And then, you know, th- that was that was our claim to fame, you know, doing originals and covers. Mm-hmm. And it was it's nice to see people dancing and singing to your music. You know, I mean, I've over the years I've had encounters with, you know, bringing. I was brought to Columbia. I mm-hmm. didn't get. I didn't get a deal. I got Universal. I didn't get a deal. Uh, Matador Records. I didn't get a deal. I, I've been showcasing and playing all my life. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. uh, you know, then there comes a point where you're too old. They don't want you at all. Mm-hmm. And then you just got to do it because you love it. And that's yeah. that's where I'm at. You know, if somebody came to me tomorrow and said, hey, I want to sign you to a record deal and put you on a 12-city tour, I'd go do it. Yeah, And if it doesn't happen, I'm happy where I'm at. Well, what I I was getting at is, okay, like there was a time when we first met, um, you, you, you came to me to work together on some songs, and my only knowledge of you, and we're talking, I don't even know how long now, it's had to be... Early 2000s, somewhere yeah. around there, or mid-2000s. Yeah, you know, I was like, oh, well, yeah, Eddie Testa band, they do, you know, whatever songs. But mostly bar stuff. Right. I'm like, he wants to come do originals. Okay, well, we'll work together. But at, at first I thought it was mostly you were doing covers with the Eddie Testa band. And then now, now that you've been a seasoned uh, recording artist now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, What's the transition like? Because now I know you're starting to start throw in originals again. Oh yeah. So that's and it's a different time. You know, back then, back then, yeah, you could get away with half and half. I mean, I did, and that's late '90s, early 2000s. Right. And then all of a sudden, somewhere around '05 or maybe '08, it was like you're either an original band or you're a cover band. There was no in between. There was no in between. Yeah, it was a very weird time. I don't know about now. I don't know if it's... Can you go back to 50-50? How's it, how's it working for you with well, originals? I'll, I'll What's the transition you, feel like to as the band feel? The band wants to play more originals when we're playing out. They think the originals are just as good as some of the covers we're doing. Mm-hmm. And it's fresh, right? But I find the key is play the original to a... Like, when you play an original and people are just sitting there, Mm -hmm. if they applaud it, that's nice. If they get up and dance, that's nicer. Mm -hmm. If it's a, you know, if it's a jumping song that that you could dance to. If it's a sit-back, laid-back song and they're just, and they dig it, that's good because you could tell. Yeah. So what I do is I don't tell people that I'm playing an original song. I just do it. I wait for the reaction of... What, what, how they are if they dance to it I do it the following day if I'm playing two two gigs in a row mm-hmm. I'll do it again because then the band's just getting better playing it that's true yep and then uh, like we've recorded some really good stuff and we recorded stuff that was okay mm-hmm. we thought it was okay but now when I listen to it I go wow that was pretty good we did some <laughs> yeah. cool things sometimes in you it. gotta walk away from it and then come back with fresh ears right but you know some of the things that we've come up with together, mm-hmm. you know, producing the songs, I feel like we produce them together. Yep. 
And uh, you, being younger than me, have great ears, and you say to me, we're taking that out. We're in the back. And I'll be like, no. But now he I... does that to you too? Yeah. And I say to him, I go, absolutely not. He goes, it's coming out. <laughs> and then when he, when I listen to it, and I go, that was a good move. <laughs> like so because much. he knows what today wants to hear. He does. I don't. I just want to write. When you're a songwriter, I always I always felt this way. You're too close to the music. Mm-hmm. You don't want to take anything out. Yeah. You don't want to take a riff. You don't want to take chorus out. You don't want to. You don't. You want to. Because you put so much effort into making yeah, it what it was. You want, yeah. you want it to every. You want the song to last forever. Like you, like you're the only songwriter in the whole wide world, right? Yeah. So, working with Jeff has been nothing but pleasurable he's for lying. me. He's I lying. I don't know about that. Huh? <laughs> he's lying. <laughs> I work with Jeff all the time, and it's not very pleasurable. No, no. I, I, I have had. No, he's yeah. like I have. No, most people do. He's just being, you know. Oh. You but know, Jeff, uh, Jeff knows I love him. He, <laughs> no, listen. There, right in the beginning, when we first started doing stuff. He's like, no, that, that, that. Because you know how he does the hand wave? No, yeah. that's out. And I was like. <laughs> oh, I know that one. No. I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Whatever you want to do. But sometimes I fight with, I fight, you know, for what I believe. And. Uh, it's true. And we know, have a it, serious talk about it. It's not yeah, like I just go. He turns the machine <laughs> off and he goes, okay, here's the deal. <laughs> give me your point and I'll give you my point <laughs> and then, and 90% and then I'll of tell time you why wins. I'm right <laughs> no I don't play that all the time or at least no, not with no, Eddie no. it's cool but so getting back to the uh, so I just play the music mm-hmm. if they like it that's great okay now I just did a show all original show and which I didn't I, see any videos on I don't know What's if anybody took any because uh, we, you know, when it's your first one, you know, I wasn't making a big deal out of it. Okay. I just wanted, you know, because the band maybe wasn't rehearsed or, or we over rehearsed or, you know, I just. You just want to get that notch in the belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we did it the following week. We did it the first night. Then we did, the, then we opened up for Cafferty at the Pony mm-hmm. and did all original, did the same set. So that was a lot better. So there was some footage, but I don't know how much. Yeah, I only saw you know, like a couple yeah, things. Yeah, a couple things, but. What I what I really liked was the first time we did it, and there was table. I mean, uh, people with tables and chairs in front of us. It was at Bar Anticipation in okay. Belmar, and people were digging digging it. They didn't quite know what it was because they're not used to us doing that. They mm-hmm. they used to cover stuff, and uh, there were people. Uh, I I remember looking over and I saw this one woman who I don't know, and she turned to her friend and she goes. I think this is, and I could read her lips. I think this is their own music. She goes, "That's good. That's really good stuff." And I could read her lips. Okay. And her friend's going, you know. And I'm like, "All right, we're doing it." Yeah. You know, yeah. it's sounding good. But also, nobody knows if you're making a mistake. That's true. They too. never heard your original. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't know the song. You, yeah. So they don't know the song. So if somebody hits a blooper or mm-hmm. hits the wrong chord or stops the beat. They would think it's in the song. Yeah. So, you know, you get away with it, but I'm more in, like, when we do cover stuff, I'm like, just just learn it. I'll see you at the gig. We'll play it. Yeah, It'll take it us <laughs> three, four, five gigs to to get it ironed out to mm-hmm. be almost perfect. And but when it comes it. to the originals, we're rehearsed, <laughs> background, everything's got to be, because that's your stuff. Now yeah. you're showcasing yourself, you know? Yeah. So I'm a little more intense with that. And might maybe going back to what we talked about being dictator. I'm not a dictator, but I do lead. I do have a well, strong you know, opinion. It, it's, yeah. <laughs> with with the original music, yeah, I, I could totally see like because, um, you know, you're the one that wrote it. One or two other probably played on it, but you did most of the work. Right. So, you know, you're the one with the vision of it that they have to get. I right. guess in a weird way, you know. No, that's that's absolutely true. But, um, and then they come up, you know, as we're doing it, they'll say, you know, Kenny might say, well, I didn't play the bass on this, but I'm going to do this in here. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, let me hear it. He'll do it. And I'll be like, that was great. Yeah. You know? So, and you know, Frankie has been mm-hmm. phenomenal doing all my stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, and you've been great on the guitar and Ilya has been great on the drums. And then 
We bring in all these different players yeah. to, you know, it's just been a great, it, listen, man, there's nothing, I don't care what anybody says, there's nothing like creating your own music or creating anything. If you're an artist creating a painting, if you're a mechanic, you know, redoing a car, yeah. there's no nothing more satisfying than the creativity of people. But the thing, like, okay, and that's a good, like, segue into what my next question is with stuff. Is like, okay, you're saying it's like a mechanic doing a, a, a car. But it's not. You're kind of pulling people from all different things, you know. Like, I know one of the singers that you pull in that she's very good. Um, a keyboardist came in this time and a Leslie came in this time. It's been a different horn section every single time. Um, different... Uh, uh, well, keyboards, organ, horns, background vocals. I mean, you did two different background <coughs> vocal people. Right. So it's almost like you're dipping into the scene. So what would be your vibe as like, what do you think the music scene is right now with all musicians? Not so much the people going to bars, but like the camaraderie of bands. I think I've met so many younger guys that are just coming up, that are phenomenal players, talents, singers, play, players. And it's good to see that, that they're not sitting home and playing with Nintendo or Xbox <laughs> or something like that. There's, there's actually musicians again. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm a dying breed. This is the way I, I really picture it. I found a little niche for myself. I'm keeping a little bit of Asbury that I know alive. Mm -hmm. We got the Bobby Banderas, they got me. You got um, the Weaklings, Glenn Burtnick and Joe Belia and Bobby Berger and John Majave. And I mean, there's just so many great players that are I grew up with and I idolize those guys. Don't forget, I learned from the Glenn Burtnicks and the Bobby Banderas and the John Eddies. Mm -hmm. And to Sonny Kins and, you know, all these older guys that were only three or four years older. But when you're 16 and they're 19 and they're playing clubs, you're like, you're like starstruck, yeah. you know. But you're, I'm learning from these guys and they're still around. So I idolized all those guys and they were moving fast, okay. you know. I mean, I got to play with Smithereens, with uh, Blues Traveler. I got to do shows with them. I learned from those guys before they were anybody. Mm -hmm. So being in those presence of, of those people and seeing the professionalism of those guys, the songwriting, the creativity, how they conducted themselves in, as a band, it was great. Today, I think you have a lot of great players that come together, but it's like a football team. Everybody becomes a free agent. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's no continuity in the bands. Okay. Not for all of them. No. But, but for a large majority of them. Because maybe this one's not getting enough work. And I think that's usually the case. That if this one's not working enough, and this band is, they, they, they just go jump to that ship, band. Yeah. Now, those... I mean, it's all the friend. It's not like I hate your guts because you're going to play with Eddie Testa. Yeah. Go play with Eddie Tessa, but when I need you, mm -hmm. yeah. this is where your pro hopefully hopefully your priority is here. Yeah, and a lot of I see a lot of jam bands. Well, that seems to be a revival now with yeah. jam bands. I mean, a lot of these kids, man. This kid Pete Tante is mm -hmm. is great, great player. Yeah. I know the keyboard player for him. Oh, uh, with him, uh, Kevin. I think yes. his name is. Yep. I'm not sure if that's his name, but no, that uh, is. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, Kevin. Killer players. <laughs> These guys are killer players. Mm -hmm. But it's like a, it's a lot of jam bands are happening right now. Yeah. So I because don't know. you know what I mean, I like jam bands. I like all whatever music, and I'm not bashing the music at all. I think the attention span of the audience is so short that a jam band is just background music. And maybe a dance vibe, maybe you know. Smoke, well, I went to go you know. see a couple of those bands because, and you know, like, be, like let's say if I played a six to ten, mm -hmm. and they come on at eleven, yeah, I go, I hang out for a set or so, and I see people just digging it, you know, yeah, and and they're 
they're just having a great time and whatever whatever's going on whatever they're into mm -hmm. that's fine every, you know what they say right there's a C for every ass yeah so, that's true you know every, whatever they're doing they, they do it well mm -hmm. so I don't necessarily like a lot a lot of things in music world but I don't dislike them yeah it's just not my style mm -hmm. but I'll go look at I'll go listen to anybody if you said go check out this band I, and I can I'll go check them out you know what I mean how many times because, you hear me say that never uh. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the Asbury scene or the music scene however you where you're, if you want me to pinpoint an area I just think the whole Jersey Shore is alive in the summertime. You can go, okay. When the summer's here, you can go to all different. You can hear reggae over here, rock and roll over here, and hip hop over here, mm. and soul over there, and you just hear. You know, the good thing about my band, we do a little bit of everything mm -hmm. except the reggae. We 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 don't delve into that because we're not very good at. We've it. had a lot of conversations <laughs> about the. About how big, especially since COVID, is like the the acoustic duo. Oh. You know, that's that's the thing, right? They're everywhere. Well, that's a, that's that's another good point. And I'll tell you, a lot of guys who were making their living playing music before COVID, and then when COVID hit, out of work, got no money. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had to rethink their lives. So a lot of these guys went back to heating and air conditioning, or painting, mm -hmm. or went back to college, or whatever. Yeah. Because they realized there's not there's no mute when the when the rug is pulled out from underneath you. There's no security. There's yeah. no security. So a lot of these guys need security. The, when you're young, it we all know matter. that we all yeah. been there. We all been 16. We all been 20 and 22, living at home, you got the hanging safety out. Net. Yeah, yeah. You know your parents ain't busting your chops. You got a little menial job to pay for your gas yeah. and your insurance, and you're living home and you're living the life. Listen, man, ain't nothing better than that. Yeah. You know? but I'm that, still living like that. Golden years. I'm still living like that. But at that point you got that safety net where you, you, yeah. you don't have to worry about it. Right, right. But I see that's another part of the music scene. These kids have left because they need the security, so they play when they can. Yeah. Or when it's available. So and you know, it's nice to see the younger people coming to certain shows keeping that music alive mm -hmm. and I was actually I played when I played Sunday at Martell's after we were done and there was a nice mix of young and old okay. at that you know because it's Martell's it's not yeah. pretty pleasant it's outside you know yeah it's, it's outside everybody's partying so it was nice the younger cr crowd with the older crowd but then I went over to go see the B Street band over at Jenkinson's okay. and hang out there for a little bit and a girl that was at our show came up to me and she said, you know, I love your music, and I love B Street music. God bless you. Thank you. And I said, why? She goes, because my mother and father, that's all they listen to. Mm -hmm. So that I, was, I was brought up on that. Yeah. I'm brought up, I listen to Fleetwood Mac. I listen to Bruce Springsteen. I listen to John Cougar. I listen to whatever my parents listen to. It's, so, ingrained, it's ingrained in them, yeah. Yeah. So they do like, and she said, I know I like my my generations generations music but she goes i actually like that music better oh that's cool she's so, a rare breed <laughs> and she's in a, in a group with five six people and they're all okay. digging you know all that's her awesome. friends so i guess it's whatever you were brought up on or uh, which way you want to go i mean i could sit there i'm not gonna embarrass myself but my parents were lame i mean i listened to air supply barry manilow and how do you Mamas feel about that Papas. today I think it's just if I mean I haven't heard Air Supply in God knows how long, um, but if it came up, it would be just like a little like a, a nod to being a kid driving up in the backseat of my parents' car, listening to that driving up to uh, Lodi. Right. You know, that's an hour and whatever plus of hearing Barry Manilow, yeah, but, Air Supply. But Mamas what a great memory, right? It's a great memory because I don't care what you say if you're yes. in your car and you listen to it, you're going to start singing it. And, and that goes yeah. back to the power of music too. Yeah, and that's and you're right, but I I don't think that shaped me as a musician. No, <laughs> no, no. Well, that that's the beauty of music. Yeah, you shape yourself. Oh uh, well, yeah. You you shape yourself into what you feel you can. Like I always looked at myself. Like guys in a band, they come and they give me a, a song, a cover song. Mm -hmm. and they said we should do this song. 
and I hear it, it's a great song. I love it. It's not me. Mm, it's not yeah. what I do. It's not, you know, I also look at the age difference. I'm not going to do something from the Jonas Brothers and I'm yeah. doing, you, you do know, Oom-bop. Me Too Proud of the Band. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just sometimes the songs just don't fit mm-hmm. the look of the band or the, or me. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. But, um, you want to try to keep it as authentic as possible. I want to do what's real in my yeah. heart. And I love a good time. I love partying. I like making people feel good. I like feeling good and doing things that I can do well. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like I, don't, I do Bruno Mars. Yeah, that's true. So I do it. Yeah. I do what I am comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. Not that, It doesn't matter what year it was, the song was written. I just think if I can do it justice... And I could do it a little bit my way, I'll do it. See, and a lot of, from what I see, younger players, younger than me, that whole, like, let me caress it to my way, it seems to have disappeared. Like, the art of uh, improv is very low right now, from what I see from younger players. Now, hopefully that'll change as time well, goes. And it could but... be the point where I made before. Great musicians, no creativity. Mm, yeah, that's no true imagination. Too. There's guys out there. Listen, there's a band. I don't know if you know Anthony uh, Anthony Amato. Remember Jones? No. I've heard you talk about them. I think the so. guy's phenomenal. He's just a presence, man. And his visions of bands when he's in a in a band is just unbelievable. Because I go there, and you know, as musicians, we get a little jaded. I don't care what anybody says because we want to be the guys on the stage. So when we go see bands, they go, oh, they're good. They're great. You pick them apart a little, yeah. Right, but, you know, because we're in the field, we're not, like, we're not critiquing anyone. Yeah. Yeah, But we also hear it and see it differently than a fan. Someone does Right. You know, someone that's not a musician. They just hear it and feel it. Like, you know, we pay attention to different things. We watch their hands when they're playing, you know. Right, right. And it takes a lot as far as I think, for someone to blow me away. Mm-hmm. So there are people that blow you away. Yeah. And you go, holy shit, Lisa Sherman, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Or you, Reagan and uh, William's Honor. Oh, yeah. Reagan yep. and... and um, yeah, Reagan. she's got some presence. What's his name? Uh, Gordon. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, Reagan Gordon. and Gordon. Sorry, William's William. William Honor. Sorry. And, uh, huh? <laughs> sorry, Gordon. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, I sorry. mean, you know, you watch these guys. And, and that's just... that's We're just touchy names yeah there's, a, there's probably there's a list. 30 other names i can yeah. mention of people who are just fantastic mm-hmm. you know and it takes a lot to to say wow that was good yeah i mean i walked into uh at one of they called themselves he calls himself remember jones i walked into a show one day because everybody was like you gotta go see anthony tonight and i just got done so i went over he was playing at the pony and I went, walked in, and he's got like these three or four guys in a, doing a drum circle before the show even started. And they're doing this drum circle. And I just walk in. I was, right from that moment, I was blown away by everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then, hooked, the, yeah. then he had a 12-piece band. And wow. I, was, I was like, holy shit, this is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. This is fantastic stuff. <laughs> but not only was it creative and energizing, but it makes you rethink you. Mm-hmm. Say, how can I change what I do a little yeah. bit? It makes you, you know want to up your game a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and, and I try to learn something from everybody. Mm-hmm. Young, old, it doesn't matter. I try to learn. I went to go see Hall & Oates the other night. Oh, nice. And I was like, well, let me see what they do. How, the, how do they move this song to that song? Mm-hmm. How do they do it? They, you know what I mean? So everything is a learning experience. And, and that's what, like you said before, we look at things differently. Yeah. I'm trying to learn how to get better all mm-hmm. the time. And maybe that's why I don't pay attention to how good or how bad someone is. True. You know True. what I mean? You're a nice I'm always guy. Trying you're to just, learn you're just a nice guy. Let's just I am a nice guy. <laughs> but, but I do love everybody and everything. Mm-hmm. And I hate, I know it sounds stupid, but <laughs> I do. I, I, whenever there's a problem, I always say I'm Switzerland. Mm, yeah, I don't want to be. I don't want no drama in my life and bullshit. Yeah, well, yeah, no. I don't, yeah. This, this day and age, nobody yeah. needs right. anything so like I that. So I just, yay, smile and move on. You know? <laughs> 
So smile and nod your head. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You're also in a Christmas band, I thought. Yes. Yeah. What, what was the name of that band again? The Mighty Tree. The Mighty Tree Toppers. That's and right. Man, and you are just they good. You did a show. Uh, what in July, right? Man, yeah, Christmas. Yeah, in how'd July. that go for you? I was I was fantastic. Yeah. Like the rest of the guys weren't that good. I know. Well, those slackers. <laughs> you got to get those slackers. Shameless oh, plug right here. It was, it was, it was great, man. We had, we had a ball. It. We have a ball doing that stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know? I, I, Talk yeah. about like just, you know, and I'm not even really giving you an option of what songs. Like, you know how somebody would be like, oh, blah, blah. no, no, no. What Christmas means to me? Yeah, that's yours. Yeah. There's really no like, what do you think about this? No, I think you're going to be good on this one. Oh, that's a dictatorship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't sing that high right now? Too bad. You're doing the song. <laughs> oh, no, no. I know you can because some of the stuff we did on your original stuff, I'm like, you can uh, do it. Yeah. Keep going. Nah, I remember yeah. the first vocal session. We almost blew your voice out. Yeah. You were pissed off at me that the Yeah. You were killing, you were killing me. <laughs> but... It's a learning experience. No, it is. And there's certain things. You hear things and you go, oh, man, this has got that. One of the last ones is, oh, that's got that Lenny Kravitz feel. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Let's go grab that, you know. But now. That's how me and you end up writing most of the time. Pretty much. I'll come in with something. And, like, I'll write, like, a a bass line for it. And I, I tend to write, like, busy parts, we'll call it. And then he'll hear it. He's like, that's really cool. But we're only going to play like a quarter of that. Yeah. We're going to make it sound like this. And and I get really pissed off in that moment because I'm like, I just, that was like, I spent so much time crafting that and making it. But then when I get to the end and I hear the final product, it's just like, right. Wow. Like I was saying before, yeah. you know, you, you're so close to it that yep. you want to yeah. like every, you want to play every note in the scale and the, that was ever written. Yeah. And then you get him to come along and he takes everything away from you. <laughs> He's like the Grinch, the Grinch yeah, of music. Yeah. Well, that's, that's how me and him work. I write something that's this big. He shrinks it down to this big. And, and then I put just a little bit more back on top when he's not exactly. looking. Yeah. I, I, and it, I, it works I, I out fine. Your, I feel your pain, Matt. I Love feel it. your pain. <laughs> I've been there many times. You guys should save this for the roast. I don't know what you're doing here right now. Um, oh, we got plenty for that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Original music, you know, release, you know, where can they find you? Where can they, you know, people find on social media? Are you going to put something out as a CD? I'm definitely going to do a CD with your help at some point. Okay. And it's going to be called um, um, The L Sessions. We already have the name. Mm-hmm. It's going to be The L Sessions Live in Studio A. That's that's right. going to be the name of the, the CD. But... Obviously, I'm going to need your help with that God, at some you, point. You got that. You know but, um, about that. I am on Spotify. Okay. And I'm putting a YouTube channel together. Okay. And I think I'm. I think when you on Spotify, you're on like iHeartRadio and different. Like it puts it out to different um, places. It depends. Like if you go with a host service, you can just put it in one place. Yeah, I'm in a host and it service just, oh, okay. of some sort. Yeah, we, we do that with this. I upload it to a host and then it goes to Spotify. Not Spotify, but it goes to like Apple, you know, Google. Yeah, I have you know, iHeartRadio. So, I'm in something. So if they search, what would they search? Eddie Testa Band, Eddie Testa. Eddie Testa Band. Eddie Testa Band. And the yeah. list of stuff should come up. And yeah. then a YouTube channel when that's then, up and running. And I'm, in, I'm on YouTube for certain things. Some mm-hmm. things are horrendous to listen to <laughs> as far as cover stuff because people are taking it from their phones and, yeah, yeah that ever sounds uploading good uploading things that you would never yeah never agree to <laughs> but listen good publicity and bad publicity you, you know both, what that's how the publicity. Publicity. Yeah, there's no, there's no speaking of uh, publicity. speaking of uh, jam bands that, that's how the dead got started they would go play shows and everybody would just videotape it or not videotape it just tape recorder it okay there's bootleg Right. That's that's our album. Yeah. <laughs> and look how famous they got. So yeah. I mean, you never know, I guess, in that that aspect. Well, listen, the the thing is, is that I could spend the rest of my life and just play other people's music, mm-hmm. but that's never what I've been about since I'm twelve, thirteen years old. Yeah. And I, the creativity is my release. If no one ever hears my music, I don't care at this point. I have to do it for me. Yeah, you're still going to write it. I write 
he knows. No, uh, this place could be on fire. He'd I'll, come with a fire hose, douse it out, and be like, all right, turn everything on. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could spend my, my life in here. Every waking moment of my life, I could be in a studio creating. And that's, that's what... I don't think I excel at it. I think I get people who excel around me to make me better. It's just that's why we have such a great relationship. And I bring in people, not because I don't want to use my band. I bring in people because maybe they have a different feel and I see them and I say, that they, he would be good on, on this song where she would be good on that song. Well, it's the best music comes from melting pots. Yeah. Yeah. So true. a little bit of flavor from everywhere. And, and that, that's what we've been doing. So I don't always use the same people like he was saying before. But, and, and a lot of them are my friends. So that's what's cool about it. And that's yeah. almost like it's this own little scene. It's a right. scene within a scene type thing, you know, right. and, which and is cool. it's funny because some of my band doesn't play on any of it. You know what I mean? So mm. maybe this, maybe the next three, they will. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I always put it out there. And when it doesn't move fast enough for me, I move on to the next, next thing. Oh, yeah. Well, because, in all fairness, you don't even finish a track and you already started writing another one. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he'll say, hey, we need a piece on, the, we need a, uh, you need to put something here. And I'll go home and I'll start working <laughs> on that. And I'll write a whole new song. And I'll come in and I'll be like, I think we should scratch that song. Maybe we should do this one now. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's happened a couple times. Because it, it, it sounds better. Yeah. You know, or or it's just a different vibe. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, I, I don't, and that's the other thing with, with me musically. A lot of times an album or people will put stuff out and every song sounds like the other song. Yeah, cook and, better. Yeah, because they wanted they wanted to keep it a theme or mm -hmm. or a vibe of the, what they they want to. I don't do that. I could write a a dance song, a slow song, a mid mid tempo song, and I put them all. I don't care. Yeah. Well, we've had that conversation on here, is where you could tell when a person like a, you know the songwriter is is writing the music that they want to play, as compared to there's a lot of bands that they're writing music that they think other people want to hear. Right. You know, and you could tell that difference. There's not as not so much passion and heart in it. And well, a lot of times I'll listen to radio and I'll say, if I write a song like that, it's going to be a, like a song like that. Yeah. I don't want to, you know. I don't want to write a song based on. I was watching a, a TV show on Netflix the other day. And it had stories of pop music. I think it's called pop music. Okay. It has different segments of different. And one of the guys on one of the episodes said they would literally go to the top 10 songs of that week or whatever mm -hmm. and try to write songs like that. Hmm. And they were very successful. Yeah. But they wrote songs that were already done. <laughs> well, already not got that we're done, but like that. that. Well, they followed yeah. the formula. They yeah. looked yeah, they right to the a formula. formula. Yeah. I think it was the one, the episode called "The Brill Building," which is world famous, right, for all the fifties and sixties yeah. songs. I mean, Carol King wrote there, Neil Sedaka. Uh, who knows? You know, mm -hmm. I don't even remember people's names, but when I hear their names, I know that which songs they wrote. You know. I mean, listen, I would have been in heaven if I lived in if I lived in uh, Detroit with Motown. Yeah, right. I, yeah. If I could have been a fly on that wall, man. <laughs> that would have been some great stuff. Yeah, they still... I think there's a tour... You could tour that studio, I think. Yeah, still. yeah. Yeah. That's one of my bucket list things. Okay. That's Absolutely. You, you, how many more bucket list things do you have? I got a lot, man, because yeah. I'm going to live a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, keep rocking, right? <laughs> That's it. Well, Matt... This is now your show. It's now our show. But first, we're going to give a shout out to our sponsor, the Stuck Up Sticker Company. You tell you go to tell Ian at uh, Stuck Up Stickers. No, Stuck Up Stickers at gmail.com for your orders. And you can find them at rustuckup.com. Tell him the JSMP sent you, and he will give you 10% off your first order. But that's nice of him. It is. It's pretty it cool. It is very nice of him. If you need stickers, let him know. <laughs> Stage banners, anything. He can print them all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. He's a great guy. He's my bass player. He's an awesome dude. He'll I take thought care. you were the bass player. 
I'm the bass. I, I play bass and I sing. He, oh. he's a, he plays bass in the band that I sing in. Oh, okay. So, yeah. But our final question for you, the same, the same question we give everybody. If there was one singular thing that you could change about the Jersey Shore music scene, what would it be and why? One thing. The Jersey Shore music scene? If it, just the, the music scene in general. If there was one thing that you could change, what would it be? And why? I, I'm going to tell you, I wouldn't change anything. Really? And I, 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 yeah, the the Jersey Shore is going to be the Jersey Shore when we're dead and gone. And pe- there's going to be bands playing, and there's going to be people out singing songs. And the only thing I, I wished was that there was more places to play that sure. people would go to mm-hmm. and be comfortable going to. Like... You know, you have your little pods of places that people go to. Yeah. They go to Jenkins, they go to Martell's, they go to the Stone Pony when it's open, they go to Wonder Bar. But these little clubs, people miss a lot of great music by not going to these little clubs like Langusta Lounge, where these little hole in the wall places that these guys are playing in duos or trios yeah. that are just fantastic musicians. Yeah. I think people miss are missing those things. Mm. So if you're asking me, I say people should experience more of the other places besides the more famous places. That's, that's a good one. But that also goes back to a thing that we talk about a lot is where it's like people don't really care about music as much as the, these days as they used to. You know, you don't really hear a lot. Like, it's not as much of like, oh, let's go see a band. You know, it's like if you go out to a bar and there happens to be a band playing, that's great. But there's just not as much, you know, people going out just to go see a show anymore. Well, I, I, I'm I going to disagree. Well, you're on the other side of the tracks. But I also <laughs> I also know of, you know, not everybody's flocking to see Eddie Testa. Trust me. I have a, I have a, a, a good loyal fan base. Mm-hmm. But my, my point is that I think ever since COVID happened, people are out in droves hmm. more so than ever. Yeah, I would say it's definitely even just playing shows I've played. It's picked up since things have opened back up. But like leading up to COVID, there were some dark times there. Well, I will speak. I only really can speak from strictly an original music point of view, and I play towards the heavier end of the spectrum. I think I think with original music, it's a it's a hard sell, mm-hmm. and um. It's always, to me, original music has always been a hard sell. you got to go out and play, and you you know it because you've done it. Sometimes there's 10 people yeah. yep. listening, and what do you do? You play your ass off. Yep. You show play that like 10 people. like there's 30,000 there. That's you right. those 10 you make sure those 10 people get, are going to yeah. come back and see you. Yep. And if six of those people are your friends, you hope the other four are going to tell their, their friends. friends. Yeah. yeah. And then that's how you build on original music. Yep. Original music has always been a hard sell because people can't s- listen to something they don't know, which always amazed me because if you put on a record or a CD or yeah. go on, but back in the day when you had CDs and stuff, well, Bruce Springsteen had one hit. Mm-hmm. Now, fortunately, with Born in the USA, he had... All hits. Yeah. But before that, if you didn't know Born to Run and you didn't listen to the album, you wouldn't have known the other songs on the album. Yeah. But if you bought the album, now you know them. So my my thing is this. You didn't know the music until you listened to it. But people don't give themselves... The world today is closed mind, Mm -hmm. I think, because with all the Spotify... So many options all the, at the tip of your fingers. You can click on. It's like getting a girlfriend. You got a girlfriend today. She breaks <laughs> up with you. You don't even have heartbreak. Yeah. You just swipe and you got another girlfriend or another boyfriend. And that's what, you know, Gary Bonds, who is a good friend of mine. I don't like the name drop, but he mm. is a very good friend of mine. And Gary is still big in this area. I don't know about other areas of the of United States. But when he goes to Europe, he is like Michael Jackson. The guy can't leave his hotel room. 
and it comes down to fan loyalty. Mm. There's the fan loyalty today, the base of people, they jump to the next thing. Mm. And that's why you have so many bands circulating. You, like you hear a band and a year and a half, two years later, they're gone. Where are they? Yeah. Yeah. Where are they? Because the people just moved on to something else. That's true, too. Yeah. And rock, as we know it, except for the older guys coming out of retirement. Yeah. And filling stadiums, which you just went to a show, Guns N' Roses. Yeah. These guys are filling stadiums at 55 years old. Yeah. And because people like you are bringing your kids. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they're, now those kids are being introduced and they're seeing it and they're listening to it. Mm-hmm. But as far as rock music, I don't, I don't know where, where you even hear it anymore. Mm. It's back to its underground roots where it started. Yeah. So if everything goes in a cycle, maybe, you know, some kid country will... Country is... Country is its new... own breed. Yeah, they but... have their own following. They're all loyal. Yeah, and it you just, have a loyal base you know, there. They're their own breed. You know, right. that's like, yeah, I don't even know, like the jazz guy. You know, like there's people that just, they will love jazz. They will go see jazz and they don't care because it's jazz. Right. You know, right. you don't have that with rock. You don't have that with blues. I think people just turn over real quick. And I think, I think that, uh, is there a record companies anymore? Oh, I don't yeah. even know. So most of it's DIY. And yeah. yeah. Like I mean, it's, it's, it's like the whole thing is a, is a mess. It's a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. You, gotta, you have so many options just like at your fingertips at all times. Right. It's just like this whole, our whole culture is, it's just on to the next. What's the next best big thing, you know? And then, you know, like you said, you'll, so you'll, somebody will be really into your band and two, three months later, they've already moved on to three other bands since then. And they're like, they don't, they don't even remember it, you know? Right. It's just like a thing of the past, gone. I'm lucky. My, we're playing out. Yeah. People still come and see me. <laughs> And places still want to book me. It's all you How much better for. can you, you can't yeah. ask for much more? You can't than ask that, more yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, listen, we it's not like a thousand people come and see me every night, but I don't. You know, if they come, it's more they, than an original band, probably. Yeah, you know, if I, mean? I was doing original music, I'd get nobody or no bookings. <laughs> a lot of the original clubs are closing. I well, think the Saints so gone. I think the Brighton's gone. Brighton's two, gone. Saints still around, right? Yeah, they're Saints. still open. Oh, uh, they are. They just opened so, up. So, what was the new one that went down? You said the last week. Roxy and Dukes? Yeah. Up north and the yeah. Danellen. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. still open? No, they closed. Really closed. Oh, they did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that tells you what the world of original music is. I know. Can't keep a plate. If you ain't making business and selling drinks and putting yeah. asses in the in the seats. Yeah, so. It's a rough It's a rough time to be a musician. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. Well, he says it all the time. It's not. It's not cool to be in a band anymore either. Yeah. Well, I think that back if, then it was. Oh like yeah, would man. Be. Yeah, you know, it's like oh fuck yeah, look at you. I always thought it was cool to be in a band. Oh, me too. But when we but when and that's why I'm still in a band. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't, a, that's the musician in you talking. Like normal <laughs> people, like nowadays, you're like, oh, you're in a band, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think people take you with you know, like when, people think when you're in a band. That either you're an alcoholic or a drug addict or a loser because, of, you know, they don't realize that you have businesses, you have families, yeah. Yeah. you have lives, and you have an education. Yeah. And you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people don't look at that. But, yeah. and, but, and the other thing is, I don't think people really give a shit. If you told them you were a doctor, I don't really think they'd, they'd give you the same reaction they gave you as you saying I'm a musician. Probably. I can see that. Because they move on to the next thing. Yeah. So everybody's so detached <laughs> these days. But if they needed you to, to fix their heart, and you were a heart oh, doctor, you'd be their then they'd be friend. interested. Yeah. <laughs> or if they needed you to play their daughter's wedding, you're their best friend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. a need world. Yep. If they need you. It's very true. I mean, look at the stars. You always read the, like, you know... Um, Blah, 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 just had a hit movie and everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And then year or whatever goes by and the next big thing comes out and that one's forgotten about. Yeah. So who knows? It's a wild ride. It's, 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 it's crazy. The lifestyle is, is what you make it. 
Yeah. If you want to be the drug addict and the guy all strung out and going to play a gig, that's on you. You want to be the guy who has four kids at home and you have a day job and you go out and play at night. You know, mm-hmm. everybody says, how do you do that? <laughs> well, number one, I love it. Number two, it's like you. You like the golf? Well, you could be as you could work sixteen hours in your job, go and then golf. and go play golf. Why? Because you love it. Yeah, it's your release. And that's what I do. It's yeah. my release. There you go. I could work twelve hours in that store, and go out and work. I could. I don't want to go home. I play three, four hours straight. My guys hate my guts. <laughs> and they go, "How do you do that?" I was home. I was off all day. Yeah. I was like, because I just want to play. Yeah. yeah. You know well, I mean? you're, you're, you're a rare breed, Eddie. You really are. Well, and... I don't pat myself on the back, but there's a lot of us that will do that. I'm trying to get you to get the fire back in you because <laughs> I want him to get... He's wasted. He's uh, one of the wasted towns. Oh, I know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I chip out, I'm chipping away at him. Yeah. So how many of those guys that comes are back there to the, in those the world? damn drummers. They ruin everything. Huh? Damn drummers. They ruin everything. <laughs> But the thing is, is there's a lot of great players that are just sitting in their houses doing nothing. Mm. Yeah. You know? One, one thing good about the COVID was a lot of these guys came out and put stuff on, on uh, Facebook or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's true. And you saw them, and you were like, I didn't know he could do that. I didn't mm. know he could sing like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That was cool. I learned about him through his reputation, but then when I got in the studio with him, I saw how how great a player he is and it's I think the problem with him is everything is so easy he's no. just natural no it's not easy but, you, you, yeah. can it's stop talk, it's you can stop talking like that his guy can hear his head just, just. I know but but no. some things are so easy that maybe he's bored at that point I don't know no that's not it never bored you always find something good to do or find right. a positive out of something uh, I just treat music as a bad breakup you know, it's just like, you fucking let me down. You have your ebbs and flows. One week you hate it. You that's, know? And that's true. And that's then, you same pop, with him. then you pop back into it and then you hate it again. There's times where we're sitting work and it's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're going to try this. Let's do this. No, no. We're gonna, let's add another thing. Here, play it like this. Here, you just play it. No, you know? yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. like, come on, we can do this. It's going to be great. It, it comes. It comes and goes. You yeah. know, I don't know if it's maybe I'm at that weird age now you know like i don't know you know what you're talking to me i'm the wrong guy to even talk about that because <laughs> well you, you know i mean you've had your ups and downs i've never had no downs really i uh, see you're so lucky listen the like, downs the are the downs are what you make downs when i left columbia records after getting denied well it was i walked out of there with tail between my legs right and i was sad that's a different thing. And I was thing, disheartening. Though. But but that's about the downest I could I could have been. Yeah, and but- I went home and I just tried to write a better song and said, I'm gonna try to be better. See, but like I don't take the business side so personal. Like that's not the down. That's that's not what I mean. Like, yes, and you're right. Some to some people that's a major downer, and, and it, maybe it was. For me, that's not it. It's it's the The lack of, maybe it's dedication, the lack of the work, the lack of the people's responses, not because of a good song, bad song, just even if it was the greatest song in the world, I kind of feel right now that people don't care. But like you said, original music has this downside to it. You know, like, yeah, it's just, but I've seen it in some cover shows where I see bands playing and they sound really good. Nobody fucking cares. Now, is it song selection? Maybe. I'm going to like songs more than a non-musician. You know, right. like, uh, you know, case in point, like a remedy. I don't know anybody that plays the song. I think it's a ripping too. Right. You know, I think it's got a groove. I think it makes people dance. All right. Well, you know, but a fan might be like, Black Crows, wasn't that hard to handle? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which was a cover of, you yeah. know, or she talks to angels, you know, like, yeah. So it's kind of like, it's like that thing where you want to be like, oh, here's that, here's that brass ring. And then all of a sudden you grab it. And it's like, ah, fuck, it's copper, you know, or yeah. like it's a penny, you know, or, whatever. Or it's not what you thought it was. That too. That too also. 
you know, know, listen, God puts you in certain situations and listen, you know, Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera, they were all in the Disney. Disney. Well, we weren't. Yeah, that's true. So who knows? When I got turned down from Columbia, the guy blatantly told me, it, stuff's pretty good, but we already have a Springsteen and a John Mellencamp. Mm-hmm. We don't need that. They were looking for something. And yeah, they were they looking for something that, new. Yeah, but... The next thing. You know, I wasn't yeah. a Cars, and I wasn't a Blondie, and I wasn't a Clash, yeah. and I wasn't Timing. the Ramones. I am Timing. what I am. Yeah. But my path of where I am right now, all the things that have happened from this day to today, I am I'm the luckiest guy ever. Oh, I, I believe it. Yeah, because you I've have such met a great so positive. many people and I've played with so many of my idols. I mean I was on Wolfman Jack tours, I was on Bowser tours, I played with Gary U.S. Bonds. I played with people standing with you know certain people that I idolized. And I'm here I am backing them up. And I'm like how much better? I'm, I'm happy. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, and then it gets I to get a it. point where you say, I'm over that hump. I'm over the heartbreak. But you're never going to take away my creativity and my music. Yeah, but then and, from that point out, you're just doing it for you. That's it. That's what I said before. I'm yeah. doing it for me. Yeah. At this point. it makes you and, happy. And, you know, I believe me, I told him, I go home sometimes and I hear an artist or I see an artist, maybe on American Idol, maybe on The Voice, maybe somebody like Pink. Maybe John Legend. And I say to myself, I'm going to write a song for that person. Even though they'll never hear it. They'll <laughs> never know that I wrote the song for them or envision them singing it. But that's what I do. And I say, I'm going to write a song for Pink. And I come in and I write. And I and the two of the songs we've done, mm-hmm. I wrote for Pink in my head. Or two songs I wrote for John Lennon, Legend in my head. Mm-hmm. But... To, like it just creates like this thing that I maybe someday I'll get it to them, maybe someday they'll hear it, maybe they'll hit Spotify and they'll ask for Ebb Tide and Eddie Test will come up by accident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't, no, you're you don't right. know. You never know. Oh, the world's crazy like yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe they'll hear it and go, "Wow, that's a good song. Who was that? Uh, Alexis, who was that? <laughs> who was that? And they'll, and they'll say who it is. Yeah. And in the age like, of the internet, you just need." You need one good song to get in the right the right one set of hands right. and have that just get bumped out to a certain group of people and it could just Gary explode. Gary Bonds told me one hit you can make a living for 20 years. That's exactly what he told me. One hit song you can live for 20 years on that song. Wow. And he's still doing it. He's 81 years old. Ooh. He just played the other day. That's awesome. Ooh. Good and for him. Good for him. Yeah. But... He's had a couple of hits. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the, in the, in the 60s, 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, he's had hits. Mm-hmm. So he's living a fantasy, right? Yeah. He's living a dream. And there's, there's other guys, Guns N' Roses. They're oh, out doing yeah. it again. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, some of these guys are sickly. They can't play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But a lot of these bands are coming back, man. And they're the old, all the older bands. Yeah. Because... There's not too many younger bands coming out to do it. Well, they're not signing. They're not getting the opportunities. Maybe some of them don't have it. I mean, maybe some of them don't have the people still in their organization. That's true too. I mean, you know, I saw the Foo Fighter. I obviously I saw Guns N' Roses. Which you look at the band, you go, okay, that's a fucking rock star. I kind of get it. Like right. that's a band. They're tight as shit. It's everything you would sit there and say. I paid a lot of money for these tickets. Oh, well. This is why. This is why. And I I caught part of the Foo Fighters at Lollapalooza when they streamed it. Fucking phenomenal. Like, you just go there and you're just like, I'm like, I'm looking at this band play and I'm like, I I can't think of one um, supposed rock original that's like, you know, I'm a rock band, blah, 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 blah. Come close to that. Now is, what's the reasoning? They not just do it is it too coddled life i mean you gotta remember these guys all they lived a hard life in the beginning before they made millions right you know it's passion 
Okay. Is the passion not it's there? It's the passion. Like, is that why I'm heartbroken? Because I see that there's no heart, no passion. So what do we, you know. It's you the, lo- yeah. Maybe you lost your passion. Oh, well, I definitely did. <laughs> but, but I ha- transformed you want it to it, other that, things. Here's the key. Do you want it back? Or you could care less. That's the thing. Oh, the same. But see, I, think, wake I up feel like transferred. Huh? I transferred mine. I do better things. I do better studio work now. I do better writing with other people. You concentrate people. your energies into something else. Yes. As right. opposed to, okay, well, I'm going to write this song and it's going to be a hit song, blah, blah, blah. It's like, maybe you're right. It's like, well, if you do it, you're too close to it. Who's who's watching my back? I watch your back. I watch your back. If I do it on my own, who's watching mine? See, I don't think you, you know? lost your passion. I just think your passion has just shifted to another shifted. area. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I could see that because even so. like when we write songs, you still get into it. You still you still enjoy the writing process. And, oh yeah, because but, you know it's like muscle memory, or it's yeah. like the light switch. You know, I could have a bad day, and the second I start playing into the set, I don't remember that bad day at all. Right, like, that bad right. day's gone. Well, that's why I said before the release. Yeah, you need the release. Yeah. But look how many actors and actresses get behind the camera. Yeah, they don't even want to act no more. Exactly, their They'd passion is, direct. is is writing or directing mm-hmm. or. Both. I well, it's what you said. I always tell my wife, like, she always, like, she's like, when you're up on stage, you just have this, like, you know, this look on your face, and you're just like, I'm like, that's my, I'm in my happy place. Like, right. that's, that's where there's not a care in the world, and I'm just at peace. You know, I, I, I always felt that way. I always felt that my best, the best person I am is when I'm on stage. Mm-hmm. And I feel, I feel more at home on stage. Like, okay. believe it or not, when I'm at work and I'm behind the counter, I feel awkward. <laughs> okay. I do. Well, you're now, an entertainer. Huh? You're, you're an entertainer. That's, well, that, that's maybe where that's what it is, but I do feel like I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a little shy to go up to people at the store, like, hi, how can I help you? You know, and mm. I, I'm a little awkward. <laughs> but, and going into the into the gig, I'm awkward. But once I get on stage, I feel like, like God just went, <laughs> bing, there's your, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. You flip Get that moving. switch and it's flip go. The switch, it's yeah. on. Yeah, I, I understand that. You know, the so, flipping of the switch. Yeah. And, and uh, it, it's just a, it, you know, it, it, it's a weird, it's a weird being mm. feeling that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and then like when people, like you go to a bar and people that know who you are musically. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of awkward too and embarrassing because people go, oh, yeah. can I get a picture with you? And I'm like, <laughs> you know, in my mind I'm saying, why would you want a picture, why would you want a picture of me? Yeah. You know, but I don't say no. No, why would you? you know? I just do it. I go, thank you. That was very nice of you. Thank you. You know, whatever. But, oh, you want to, you know, but I guess people perceive people differently mm-hmm. from different perspectives, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, just like you cut, you kept bringing up how you were playing with your idols or doing this and idolizing that person. Like you're now in that position where some of those younger guys that you've talked about, you're probably that guy to them. Maybe in Asbury. Yeah. You know, or certain places. Yeah. And, uh, but I've always been surrounded by great people musically and, and been able to play with great people. Oh, well, that's what that's, it's all about. Yeah. And that, that to me is like, you know how how you how you are perceived by your friends it tells you what kind of person you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So I mean, I, listen, I've had my share of people say you suck. Come t- text me on Facebook when face, Facebook wow. Facebook first came out. They're like, "Oh, who the fuck do you think you are? You suck." <laughs> I saw you the other night. Those are keyboard and, warriors. <laughs> and that hurts me. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt me to the point where no, stop. I just think I'm going to be better next time because I want to prove to this guy that I don't suck. Yeah. You know what I mean? I might have sucked that night. But like we said before, I gave you, even though I might have sucked, <laughs> I, I, gave, I gave that 100% whatever I had in me. Yeah. You know? Everybody but it might have came out. As, bad days. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's I might have came out and sucked, but I gave you what I could. Yeah. yeah. But it, may, it fuels me to be better. Doesn't fuel me to be angry. I'm not angry at that person. Mm-hmm. I just feel like I'm going to be better, and just like everything I try to do, I try to do it better. Yeah. And at any age and any day, 
of my life. I'm always going to try to be better or a better person or whatever. I think you're right. I am sometimes I am too nice. <laughs> I have I don't have I don't have asshole in me that much. Nah. I try not to be and I'm not just patting myself on the back. I'm just saying um, I I don't have that in me at all. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's good. I mess you know, with you whenever I like, say I, something like I, that. I, huh? <laughs> I always just mess with you. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I put in, a, 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 back about 30 years ago, I put in to be a, a police officer. Okay. Right? I took the test. I scored very high. Mm-hmm. I got the call. My friends were like, there is no way I could see you as a cop. <laughs> and I just got married. My wife said, Get the fuck out you of here. You have no asshole in you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to have a little... Excuse me, sir, you're speaking. You got to have a little bit of... You got to be able to turn it on when you need yeah, it. I, and I go, yeah. She's like, oh, you'll go walking up to the car, you go, and there'll be guys hanging out with guns and smoking pot and taillights out and bumpers falling off. And you go, oh, you have your back taillights out and, uh, you know, just get that fixed. And I'll, thank you. <laughs> that would be me as a cop <laughs> forget the guns and the knives and the dead body hanging out of the back yeah. of the trunk you'd be like just have a tail light out so just get that fixed tomorrow okay thanks <laughs> but uh oh, yeah boy. that's what it is man. well you know what Eddie you are a stellar human being uh, from uh, a personal no uh a great <laughs> musician you know, you are my shining light to my darkness. So I will say oh, that. Okay? That's very nice of you. And uh, like you are yeah, there's there's shy. a reason I think I hold you up there as a Jersey Shore legend. So well, and you kind of appreciate proved it that tonight, compliment, okay? but I don't feel that. But uh, thank well, I'll you. That, there if you, you go. if you want to say it, that's fine because you're my friend. You can say that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot for coming, man. It's, it's hey, great. thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate I appreciate it. Nice yeah. meeting you, Matt, and being here. Yeah. All right. It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. All right, we'll see you guys in two weeks. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye.